Welcome. 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 I'm so glad you could join us for our first ever online women's conference and it's called Progress. I'm so glad you could join us because I know you're going to be blessed. I know I am. I'm really looking forward to hearing from um, some of our lovely friends, sisters of faith in the church, as well as connecting on Zoom and really um, just hearing each other's heart as well as digging into the word of the Lord. I know that in such a time as this, the Lord has prepared a way where we couldn't even think of a way. This might not have even seemed possible before the recent uh, pandemic and crisis that we could meet online and make something happen that way. But here we are, and I'm so excited. I know we're all going to, to grow together. And really, that's what the theme of this conference is. It's about growth. It's called progress. And I'm praying that we will each see that and um, have faith for that in our lives. So, ready, set, go. Here we are. Welcome, be blessed, and enjoy. Thank you. Hi, ladies. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that you are with us wherever we are, even if we're not in the same physical building. Your Holy Spirit dwells in us and unites us in one spirit. Thank you that you are inside of our hearts, that we are your temple. You are inside us, beside us, going before us, and you are our rear guard. Your love never fails. Thank you, Lord, for each dear woman who has joined us in this way online. We ask your blessing on each one and for their dear families and for your strength and your peace. You have made each one of us unique, Lord, and we can bring joy to your heart that is particular to our relationship with you. You've given us a challenge in these days, Lord, a challenge to put our whole trust in you to lean not on our own understanding, to pray for others in the body of Christ, to cry out to you for this world, to lift our eyes to you and not on circumstances around us, to pray for those on the front lines, to pray for our leaders, and to release your joy wherever we can, however small. Bring us together, Lord, by your spirit, so we can be your light to a dying world. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hey everyone, my name is Jenny and I have the privilege of being on the pastoral staff team at London Gospel Temple. And tonight I get to introduce to you our two speakers. The first speaker that you're gonna hear is gonna be Laura Rogers. And you totally know her. She's always busy helping and serving and she's just been so faithfully planted in this church. Um, I've had the privilege of growing up with her since we were in our 20s. Um, I've even lived with her as a roommate and you really get to know someone when you do that. So I can just attest to just her passion for the Lord, uh, her love for God's word, and just a real wisdom that I've seen growing in her over the years. So you may not have heard her speak publicly before, but I know you're gonna be blessed tonight. After Laura's talk, you're gonna hear a brief follow-up message from our lovely Pastor Kathy. I know we all know and love and appreciate Pastor Kathy for her ministry to the children, but also for her friendship for us, her special love for Jesus, and just how that comes across in the way that she talks. So I am so excited just for the nuggets of truth I know she's gonna be sharing with us um, for a few minutes later tonight. After that segment is done, there's gonna be a scripture reading and the idea with that is that it's a scripture that relates to this theme of progress, and you can just take that scripture home with you and put it in your heart tonight. If you're watching this video live with us, then right after the video ends, there will be a short break, and then we're all gonna jump on a quick Zoom call together. Tonight, we're gonna have a fun, short, and sweet 
meet and greet on Zoom. So if you already signed up online, then you already have all the Zoom call details in your inbox. If you haven't signed up yet, it's not too late. Just click the link in the description of this video, follow the instructions, and you'll receive an email with all the information so that you can join us on Zoom. So enjoy the speakers, enjoy the scripture, and I'll see you on Zoom. Hello everyone, it's such a privilege for me to be here with you tonight and speaking. Um, I'm just going to dive right into it. When I first heard about the theme for the, this conference, progress, I was really intrigued because to me it just seemed so counterintuitive for this time and this season. But the more I got thinking about it, I realized I, this word is so timely, I think, for all of us right now. And you may have seen the promo video with the definition, but progress is simply movement forward. And if you remember anything from tonight, I hope you just really remember that progress is not defined by huge gains. Even the littlest step is progress. Not, it's not, the definition isn't this massive distance that you've traveled. Even the littlest step is progress. That is movement forward. That's all it is. And maybe during this season, we need to start measuring progress differently than we have in the past. And I'll talk a bit more about that later, but I wanted to share a scripture verse that came to my mind when I first started thinking about this conference and the word progress. And the scripture is from Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. And it says, this is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. So I want to look at some of the words in that verse, because um, I think they're really key to getting a better understanding of it. And the first word I'll look at is actually the word look. So stand at the crossroads and look. And that word, uh, look, is, can also be inspect, consider, it's to have vision, to observe, it can be to discern. And when I think about this word and this verse, I actually think of the word circumspect. It just came to my mind so many times as I read this over. And the word circumspect just means to consider all of the options or consider all the circumstances or the consequences or to be alert. And so if you break that word down, circum means um, to go around or to encircle. And spec just means to see. So, but I really think that this is an important word for us in this season. I think this is a time for us to be circumspect, to have and take a good look all around us. What are the things that I'm filling my life with? What are my priorities? What are, what are the things that I am, that are, uh, that I'm allowing to direct my life right now? And where am I headed? Where am I going? Like, let's be circumspect right now. Now, what are we supposed to be looking for? It says in this verse, it says, ask for the ancient paths. Now the word ancient there, it's also translated in the Hebrew. It's, it just says old paths, ask for the old paths. Now, when you hear that, I don't want you to think that this is saying you're supposed to be traveling on an old path or an old, doing things in an old way, or literally something from your past that you're supposed to be going back to. Like, that's not what this word means. The word actually means long duration or futurity. Futurity is a really different word, um, but that literally this word old past, so old, just the old part, ancient, can be translated instead as perpetual, forever always, continuance, lasting, permanent. That's not what I think of when I hear the word old necessarily. And so this also comes from another word that means to conceal or secret, um, something that's hidden, the vanishing point. So this word ancient or old, it really speaks to something that is long-standing and proven trustworthy something that should be sought out. It reminds me of a treasure or something that maybe you're supposed to search for that isn't as obvious or something that needs to be discovered. So the verse is stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is and walk in it. 
Now let's look at the word crossroads because it's actually translated in the Hebrew. It just says, stand by the ways and look. Ask for the ancient past, ask where the good way is and walk in it. So the good way and the word crossroads are actually the exact same word. It's, it's the word way or ways. So stand by the ways. Well, this word ways is actually in the Bible in a few different places. Um, it, it also is in another verse where it says the way of faithfulness, the way of righteousness, the way everlasting, the way of the blameless, and it can also be the way of the wicked. So there's lots of different ways here. And you can even think about your own life, like you can go your own way or you can go God's way. These are the, the ways. So when it says the good ways, what it means is <clears throat> the ways of the Lord, the ways of righteousness, the ways of faithfulness, the, way, the ways of peace, that's the way. And it also speaks to things that, you know, this is trustworthy, this is proven, right? And it, these are ways that we can look at how other people have gone before us and lived their lives. We can look at the people in the Bible and their forefathers of the faith and say, see how they live their lives, the way that they live their life. Like those are the ways, those are the old, the ancient, the proven, the trustworthy ways that we are supposed to be taking, the ways that we are supposed to follow in and live our lives. So to see progress and to progress and move forward, we actually need the Holy Spirit because we, we need him to open up our eyes to reveal to us like, what is the way? Where is the way that I'm supposed to walk? These, it says ask. These are things that we're supposed to desire the good way, desire and ask the Lord to show us. Because as we said, this is speaking about something that can be hidden or maybe isn't as obvious. And maybe we need to have these spiritual eyes open to be able to discern what the Lord is saying and where he wants us to go. It's not something that we can always just see with our natural eyes. We need the Lord to know what his will is for us, right? And so the old or ancient paths, the word for paths actually means moral action and character. So this verse isn't just talking about big life decisions. It's not just talking about progress here with large life milestones and things we need to check off our list. No, it's talking about our actual character. Who are you as a person? Um, for spiritual progress and moving forward, like we want to move towards the things that he has for us. We want to become the women that he is calling us to be. And so right now, like what direction do you feel the Spirit pulling you in? Do you feel Him calling you in a certain way or calling you and moving you in your heart to change things? Like, whatever you feel right now, He's speaking to you. Like, that's what you need to focus on. If He's highlighting things for you to change, those are the things that you need to be giving your full attention to. Like, that's the direction you need to be going in because that's where you're going to see the progress because that's what the Lord is working on you right now. And so I really believe, too, that we are in a season of transition. We're transitioning from what was to what will be. And we're in this middle area where it's confusing and things are shifting and changing. And it reminds me of the one picture I had for this verse of the person in the forest with the paths and the trees are literally changing and shifting around them. And it's uncomfortable. and but the lord is is in the is working he's doing something in us and it's hard because the things that worked before in the other season aren't working in this season we're trying to figure out how to navigate it and what's normal now going to look like um and it's it's stretching and it's unfamiliar and it's not in our control either but we can't measure progress the same way that we did in the season before and it can be especially hard for us to see progress while we're in the middle of a stretching season or a season where we're growing or trying to stretch forward, right? Uh, it's easier to see progress when you look backwards. But know that you are, you are progressing. The Lord is moving you forward. 
And maybe you're feeling the exact opposite right now. You're not feeling stretched or at your capacity. Maybe you're feeling stalled and stopped and discouraged and like nothing is happening. Or maybe it's some weird mix of this crazy busyness that you can't control and then also this like nothingness and what is even going on. Um, but I believe the Lord is wanting to use this time to do a deep work inside of us. There are things he wants to change and he is changing in you right now. Uh, there are things he's doing beneath the surface and that's something to remember with growth and you, we know this about plants and trees that the majority of their growth happens beneath the surface. It's not, it's not visible to our eyes. Um, there is ground he has for you to take during the season, ground he wants you to take back that the enemy has stolen. <sighs> this isn't a time for us to be apathetic or just sit around and wait for this whole virus and season to be over. No, like the Lord never calls us to apathy. We're not supposed to be apathetic and just sitting back. If he calls us to wait or to rest or to be patient, we're supposed to do that in faith, with hope, and fully engaging in his spirit. There's never a time where we're supposed to disengage from him or from his spirit. That, that is not what he wants. And we, I truly believe, too, that the small decisions that we make during this time are going to have massive impacts in the season to come. And yeah, that reminds me of the, the picture I shared of the person that's standing in the center with all the roads going out in every direction. Taking, you know, this road or this road is just, they're so close together, it's such a small step, but when you extrapolate those out, it can be the difference between ending up over here or ending up over here. I really think that the Lord, the things he's doing in you right now, if you really lean into what he's doing and the things he's changing and the, the work he's doing, like it's the difference between being here and being, I think, up over here at the end of this season. Like the Lord is doing something in you and it's a good thing. Um, and don't let the enemy discourage you right now. Don't listen to the lies that he's telling you about your future or about who you are as a person or don't be giving in, let's not give into fear or anxiety or being controlled by our anxieties. Like we want to be led by the spirit and living a life fully in, in the Lord and walking in the spirit. Don't let those things hold you back right now. Take background in your mind and in your life from the enemy. Don't give way to that. Let's be circumspect right now. Like, what, what are the things that are stealing my attention or stealing my joy or stealing my peace right now? What are my priorities? What is really actually important right now? What is the Lord highlighting for me to do or to change? What is he speaking to me right now? What is he speaking to you to pray even? Let's, let's just be circumspect and looking around us. Remember, though, too, it's, it's only progress if the Lord is in it. Otherwise, it's just toil. It's, it's not about just doing all the things and trying hard in our own strength. Like that's, that's, that's good sometimes, but it's also just going to leave you exhausted and tired. The progress we're talking about here is the progress where, remember when I shared about those, those shifting and changing paths? Progress with the Lord is like taking one little step in the direction you feel Him calling you to. And all of a sudden, he's moved you way up here, leaps and bounds further than you could have ever moved on your own. Progress with the Lord is far beyond our own physical capacity. Progress with the Lord is a spiritual thing that he moves us forward. And we got to go in the direction that he's leading because that's where we're going to see the progress. And it's not always easy even when we are doing with the Lord, but this verse promises us something else. At the end, it says, ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. This rest we're talking about is, is not a normal rest. It's a rest we can only find 
in the Lord, a rest knowing that we are walking in his will and doing what he's asked. And things may be hard. You know, he may be leading us through the, the desert. He may be leading you through the darkest valley or even the deepest waters or through the fire, but you can know that he is with you and that he will give you rest for your soul and that he will see you through it. Amen? Amen. And this reminds me of a verse in Isaiah, which I, you probably recognize. It's a great one, and it's Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past or that former season. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The Lord is doing a new thing in you, a new thing for a new season. It's springing up. Do you perceive it? He's making a way. Even when maybe you don't see any path right now in your life, but the Lord is making a way for you. And maybe we can't see the path with our natural eyes, and the path is a spiritual path. There's, there's literally no path, but like the Lord is making a path, and we have to follow in the steps that the Lord is giving us. Know that he will see you through. Keep moving forward. Do not stop now. You have come too far to give up now. In Jesus' name, he is with you. He will not forsake you, okay? And maybe you're not sure what direction to take or you're afraid of making the wrong step. Well, I have a scripture for you too. And it's Isaiah 30 verse 21. And it says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And that is the scripture that you can claim for your life. You can claim it for this season. I love this scripture. The idea that the Lord is, he wants to guide you. He wants to show you where to go. And we, if you are afraid of making the wrong step, you can know that when you do, if you're really wanting to follow the Lord and that's your desire, he's going to show you the right way. He'll get you back on track if you take the wrong step. He, he's with you. He is guiding you, and He will guide you through this season. Lean into the Lord and all He's doing in your life right now. Embrace this transition, this season that He's preparing you for what is coming. Um, the things that matter to the Lord, like the things He's teaching us right now in this season, are crucial for your growth and for your progress that is even going to be coming, that's preparing you for what's coming. And the things that matter to the Lord are the things He's wanting to change. And those things are like our relationship with Him. Like we want that to grow and be stronger in our character, our obedience to Him, our hearts are what matter to Him. And I have another verse for you too, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. And it says, Therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is, uh, what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So pray, ask the Lord during this season to open your eyes to see the things that are unseen, to see with spiritual eyes, to be able to discern what he's doing and where he's directing you. And pray too, like ask him like this says, like you can be renewed day by day on the inside. Ask him for his strength. He will fill you. He will give you the strength you need for this season. If you are following in the way he has and the way he's leading you, he will give you the strength to do that in Jesus name. Amen. He is with you and he has, he has such good things for you. And we just need to follow him. Ask him for what you need in this season because he wants to give it to you. And he is preparing you for what is coming. So we can be excited for the good things that he has on the other side. Amen. Amen. Have a great night. Hello, ladies, and welcome back. And thank you for joining us tonight in our first session of our online women's conference progress. And thank you, Laura, for that excellent teaching and those encouraging words that you shared with us. 
I'm sure that her words have already shown you some ways that you have made progress in your life. And I will briefly touch on some of the scriptures that she shared with us in just a minute. But first, I just want to say, God has something good for you. God has something very good for you. Some of you have walked through very difficult and hard days in your life before, but for others, this is the most trying time that you have ever faced. And so, just want to tell you, you are not alone in this. God is with you, and he's helping you, and your future is very big and very bright. There's good things in store for you. God has good plans for you. He loves you. He cares about every part of your life. Now I want to dig into one of the scriptures that Laura said to us tonight, which was Jeremiah 6, 16. And it says, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. So there's four words there that are key. Look, ask, ask, and find. So what is the good way? What is the way, Lord? What is the way that you want me to live my life today? What is your way for me? John the Baptist said, he must increase and I must decrease. But what does that look like in my life? We all want to become the women that God wants us to be. Scripture encourages us to have more and more of Jesus in our lives. And Laura encouraged us to engage with the Lord. Well, how do we engage with the Lord? We engage with the Lord or we press into God in many different ways. For me personally, I engage with the Lord in prayer, but I also engage with the Lord in reading and writing out scripture. So people engage with the Lord in many different ways. You may read, you may pray, you may worship. And I often think that engagement with the Lord is done in little baby steps. At least in my own life it is. For me, sometimes it's been a tiny little prayer. Lord, help me. Lord, I need you. We can ask the Lord to enlarge our capacity for him. Enlarge our capacity to engage with him. Enlarge our capacity for him in our lives. Some aspects of our life are obviously spiritual and they're beyond our capacity. So we need to ask God to help us with that to be more like him, to walk this spiritual path that he has for us to walk. He knows everything we need and he's got it. <laughs> he's got you and he's with you. I thought this morning about Paul and Silas when they were in that Roman jail, so disgusting and despicable, cold, in the middle of the night, they chose to engage with God in worship. And because they engaged in God with worship, other people were saved that night. The jailer was saved and his entire family. Praise the Lord. When we engage with God, it affects other people in our lives. There's another verse that Laura shared with us tonight, and it was Isaiah 43 and 19. And it says, see, I am doing a new thing and now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So God assures us that there is a way for us. There is a path for us. There is a road for us. There's a way for you. There's a path for you. There's a road for you in your wilderness. In your wilderness, ask God what he has for you. There's a stream there. And there's a path. In this, God, in this time, God has good things for you. And it's natural for us to think that, 
well, when this is all over, I'm going to grow, I'm going to have grown spiritually, or I'm going to have a big blessing. But this verse in Isaiah says to us, he's doing something new now. It's here now. It's not coming later. What God has for us is now. There's a path right now today. There's a stream right now today. This is the blessing for us today. This path he has for you will bless you. This path that he has for you will bless your kids. This path that God has for you will bless your husband. What God has for you is going to minister to you. It's going to minister to your loved ones. It's going to minister to your co-workers. And it will minister to your neighbors. It's going to anchor you and give you a stability that you need in these days. God has a place of perfect peace for you and it's a peace that passes all understanding and it's for you. I want to finish tonight with Laura's opening words to us. Progress. It's simply the movement forward. It's not defined by huge gains, but even by the littlest step forward. Tonight, you're moving forward. You are making progress regardless of what you see happening around the world. You are moving forward in God. Thank you, friends, for spending time with us tonight. And as I leave you, I just want to tell you something that I'm very confident of, that he who began a good work in you We'll continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Good night. Today's scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 to 21. And I'm using the NIV version. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurable more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generation, forever and ever. Amen.